Welcome back. So we're talking about the Fourier transform as a method of approximating uh, continuous functions f of x uh, on some infinite domain from negative infinity to infinity. So let's call this f of x. And we have shown that this uh, Fourier transform can be thought of as a Fourier series where you take the periodic domain from minus L to L and you take the limit as L goes to infinity. So in the last lectures, we derived this Fourier transform pair. So it's relatively straightforward to go from some function of X to, a, to its Fourier transform, this F hat of a frequency variable omega. And if you had this Fourier transform F hat, you could go back to the space domain F of X. But one of the things I think is particularly useful about the Fourier transform, one of the reasons it's so useful for us, is how it transforms derivatives, okay? So if I look at the Fourier transform of the derivative of some function of x, d dx uh, of f of x, there's going to be a nice formula for how this transforms under the Fourier transform. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're literally going to take this formula for the Fourier transform, this integral formulation, and we're going to replace f of x with df dx. Okay, and then we're going to do some, uh, some calculus and see what pops out. Okay, so this is going to be the integral from negative infinity to infinity now of df dx, e to the minus i omega x dx, good. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to integrate this by parts. Okay, so we're going to consider uh, this, remember the integral of um, u dv equals u v um, minus the integral of v du, that's integration by parts. And so here what we're going to do, we're going to let this be uh, u, and we're going to let this be the dv. And when we integrate by parts, what we're going to get is uv. Okay, so the integral of dv is just, if, if dv is df dx, then v is just f. Uh, and so this equals u times v. So that's um, f of x times e to the minus i omega x. That's... Um, u, v, and you always take that, evaluate it at the bounds of integration, so that's from minus infinity to infinity, and then minus the integral of v du, minus the integral from minus infinity to infinity of v du, and v again is just f of x, and du, now uh, if you take the, the derivative of u with respect to x, you get a minus i omega, uh, I'm just going to write this minus i omega e to the minus i omega x. Okay, that's dv. So I'm just going to put little under braces around this so we remember what we're talking about. This is v and this is uh, du. Okay, so all we've done here is we've taken the Fourier transform of the derivative of f with respect to x, and we're using our simple integration by parts formula. So we're letting the df dx be my dv, and my e to the minus i omega x be the u. That equals uv evaluated the bounds of integration minus the integral of v du. Good. Uh, and now you're going to see that this minus and this minus are going to cancel. That's nice. So there's an important part of this uh, that I, I want to point out, which is, um, so e to the minus i omega x for all x, this is, this is a comp, for all real valued x, this is a complex, a purely imaginary exponent. And so e to the i anything is gonna give you cosines and sines. And the kind of length of this complex number, the, the norm of this complex number is gonna be one. Okay, it's going to be on a circle with a different angle given by minus omega x. Okay, so this at most has length 1. Okay, and it's multiplied by f of x. This is a very important property of the Fourier transform that I need to tell you, is that your function f of x has to decay to 0 at plus and minus infinity. This only makes sense, this Fourier transform pair only makes sense if f of x decays to 0 at 
uh, as x goes to positive and negative infinity. Okay, so the way I drew it here where this, uh, this hat function dies out to zero, those are the only kinds of functions you can represent where they die out to zero. So this f of x evaluated at plus infinity or minus infinity has to be equal to zero, and it's multiplied by e to a purely imaginary number, so that zero times something that has norm one is equal to zero. Okay, so this is going to equal zero at those bounds of integration. And so this entire integral expression now is going to equal just all of this stuff here. So my minuses cancel, and I get a plus um, negative infinity to infinity. Since this integral is with, re with respect to dx, I can pop my i omega out. So this is an i omega integral negative infinity to infinity of f of x uh, e to the minus i omega x dx. And this is really nice. This expression here, this entire integral here, is just the Fourier transform of f of x. This is just the Fourier transform of f of x. And so what we get after this entire procedure, this chain rule procedure, is that the Fourier transform of the derivative of a function is just i omega times the Fourier transform of the function itself. Okay, so this is equal to the Fourier transform of df dx. Okay, that's an extremely useful property. So what that means is that if I have some function f of x, I can compute its derivative in the Fourier domain much, much more easily in some cases. For example, I just Fourier transform my function, I multiply that, that function by i omega, so my derivative becomes a multiplication in the Fourier domain. I take my, my Fourier transform and I just multiply it by i omega, and that's the Fourier transform of the derivative of my function. Okay, And we're going to find that this is actually very useful for computations. Sometimes I can compute this derivative more accurately in the Fourier transform domain. If Sometimes I can approximate df dx more accurately by first Fourier transforming f, then multiplying by i omega, and then inverse Fourier transforming. Okay, so that's a frequent thing we do. That's called the spectral derivative, and we're going to code that up in MATLAB and Python. We're going to see that it's more accurate than doing a finite difference, central difference, forward difference, or backward difference derivative uh, like you would normally do. Okay, so that's particularly useful. It's also really nice because you can transform partial differential equations into ordinary differential equations this way. So this is really cool. If I have some PDE like UTT equals uh, some constant UXX, so this is just the, um, the, the wave equation, okay? So U is a function of T and of X, of time and of space. And if I Fourier transform, so this is a PDE, if I Fourier transform in space, so let's take Fourier in X, then what I'm going to get is u hat time derivative. So I didn't Fourier transform in time, I just Fourier transformed in space. But now if I take this function, this x derivative, if I take two x derivatives, I get an i squared omega squared times the Fourier transform of, of u. And so i squared omega squared is just minus omega squared u hat. Okay? And so what this means is that now... I have an ODE in the Fourier transform variable. Okay, so I took my original system, I Fourier transformed in space, and now I don't have partial derivatives anymore, I just have time derivatives equals a function. This is an ordinary differential equation. And just to see this a little bit more clearly, I want to be very explicit. My u uh, was a function of x and t, and when I Fourier transformed, I get u hat which is a function of omega and t, okay? So that's what I mean when I say I Fourier transform uh, in x, is I do this Fourier integral with respect to the x variable, and I swap out space for a spatial wave number, a spatial frequency omega. And now you can convince yourself that if I take the partial derivative of either of these with respect to time, I can essentially pass a derivative with respect to time anywhere I like in this integral go. I can bring it inside the integral or outside the integral because my time derivative commutes with my integral with respect, with respect to space, okay? And so what that means is that if I Fourier transform with respect to space, 
this u hat now is a function of omega and t. And so u hat, I can still take partial derivatives in time. And now I get an ordinary differential equation. Uh, in fact, I get one ordinary differential equation for each omega. For every omega, this is just an ODE uh, in time. Okay, this is like u double dot equals minus omega u. And I can compute that, that uh, the solution of that ordinary differential equation. Okay, so very, very useful property of the Fourier transform is that the Fourier transform of the derivative of a function is just I omega times the Fourier transform of that function. And I can use that either to approximate derivatives numerically very accurately, or I can also use that to transform partial differential equations into ordinary differential equations. Okay, so we're going to explore this more uh, with some numerical examples in a bit. All right, thank you.